Today, I'm flying first class from Austin to Barcelona. I spent nearly $5,000 on this ticket, so we're gonna go find out what other first class passengers do for a living to afford these tickets. But before we do, I have to pick up my luxury lounge access card. We got the flagship lounge access, spending almost $5,000. This is one of the things you get, so let's check out what kind of food and other amenities we get. Oh my God, yes. Welcome in, enjoy your visit. Now this is luxury. Complimentary champagne as soon as you step through the door. There were unlimited options of drinks and even some of the dishes were bougie. Yo, provincial shrimp. This is fancy shrimp. I was flying high at this point and ready to go and talk to some first class passengers. But then, of course, this happened. I asked a guy if we could interview him what it's like to be in lounges. He said no. Uh, can we ask you about uh, how first class is and what it's like to be in, in the lounge? It's great that I got a guy mate, so I can't talk. Thank you. No worries. But then this guy came to her rescue. What kind of stuff do you do to be able to afford a lounge? I breed and show French Bulldogs and American Bullies. I no also way. I have a, um, a store with Amazon. I do Airbnb and tour as well. Is that a lucrative career? People are interested in getting dogs? You definitely can make a lot of money, but you can lose a lot of money as well. What's an example of that? I purchased a pocket male bully from Mexico. Okay. And I bred him to my female and we had 13 cups off that one litter. And I probably made like 65,000. Yeah, 60, really? 65,000 documented off that one litter. It was time to board the plane for my connecting flight, and even then, I couldn't escape another rejection. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna give any information out, and I just, I don't do any type of social media responses at all. As I was taking my seat, I bumped into this fella. Rocco, what do you do for a living? We're franchisees, my parents started the business. We do Sabaro Pizza. As a franchisee, we do Dave's Hot Chicken as a franchisee, and we do Freshie as a franchisee. And you have a helicopter business as well? Yeah, us and some phenomenal partners built North America's largest private helicopter facility downtown Chicago. How did your family get into the franchise? So my dad was an industrial chemist and my mom had a master's degree in teaching and they wanted to make more money. What was that like as a kid to be a part of that? Did you got to adult take over? Yeah, it sounds really great, but my parents made us work every weekend, every free moment that we ever had. And what advice do you have for someone starting out in the career? You have to be prepared to really work a lot. I was sending out emails for work until the last second before we had to board the plane and I'm going to do some more now. All right. So we're sitting in first class. This lady was nice enough to say hello to us. How is it to sit in first class? The leg room is definitely worth every penny. It's pretty, it's crazy up here. What made you decide to, to sit in first class today? Because it's an overnight flight and I can extend my legs and get some good extra, you know, quality sleep before I start my vacation. It's really, it, it's honestly super luxury. What kind of stuff do you do for a living to afford points or to be able to get first class? I work for a television network. Do you really? Like you're on air or? No, 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 no. No, you can be on air. Behind, no, no, behind the scenes. I could never be on air. Is that a career you'd recommend for other people? Yeah. I mean, my side of the business, yeah. But mine's also directly translation, trans skills that translate to a lot of different industries. So I just happen to end up in the TV industry. How'd you get into TV? That's so cool. Networking, network connections, who you know. Really? What gets you anywhere you want to be in the world. Yeah. And then what, what's a tip for someone who wants to network or be in TV? Don't hesitate to ask for help. And if you meet someone, follow up, be gracious, be kind, and ask if they'll talk to you, because most people like to talk about themselves, clearly. The flight was taking off, and I was getting comfy living the first-class lifestyle. I had Wi-Fi, they handed me some snacks, and this was the freshest airplane fruit I have ever seen in my life. We touched down for a labor and had some time to kill, so I wanted to speak to some more first-class passengers. How is it to sit in, in first-class seats? Pretty comfortable. <laughs> you were right across from me. I was. It was nice. It was nice. I guess I think people are curious what, who are the people that are up there and then what do they do for a living to, to afford it? Well, I'm retired now, okay. but I was uh, an orthodontist. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. What does someone that's an orthodontist make? Anywhere between a half a million and three quarters of a million. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. Any other advice for people just getting started out there or early in the... Something you like. You won't work a day in your life if you find something you like. All right, so this guy had an AP, which I thought was super sick. What kind of stuff do you do for a living for? I have a sign company, I manufacture interior and exterior signs. Uh, it's a family business started in 1963 called the Alphabet Shop. It's been a great thing, and uh, it'll they be can good to watch. And people can get rich making signs. You can do pretty well. What, what kind of signs are y'all making? We do interior and exterior signs. We put them on top of buildings. We do ADA signs, all types. This is like like bar signs, or what kind of signs are we talking about? Signs that you see on top of the buildings. We do illuminated signs, interior signs, all of them. Yeah. That is, and if someone's just getting started in their career and they, they're aspiring to have the, like, the watch or the, the kind of business, what do you recommend? Starting your own business. Yeah. Can people get rich starting a sign company? 
You can do all right if you work hard. It was time to board my next flight from Chicago to Barcelona and talk to more first class passengers. What, what kind of stuff do you do for a living to afford this? I work in finance. What kind of finance stuff? Futures, the Chicago Board of Trade. Oh, really? Yeah. You do that stuff? Yeah. What's the craziest stuff you can futures trade? Corn, oil, I mean, soybeans, platinum, palladium. Is that, a, is that a lucrative career? Like, what can someone make doing that kind of stuff? Trader, yeah, traders. They can make a lot of money. I mean, huge swings. It's like trading stocks, but it's just a little different. It can turn against you really quick, too. What's like as many stories come to mind that you've heard of? The guy traded for himself, not even for a company. He kept positions on overnight, and he lost like 800000 like that. The next morning, yeah. And he was a local, like, he wasn't like some super rich guy. I mean, he was, he was trained for himself for his living. What advice do you have for someone starting out in their career? Everything is on YouTube. Everything. You can search this anything. video. Yeah, this video, <laughs> anything, anything you, could, you could search. If you want to learn, you know, welding, if you want to learn future trade stuff, you know, there's, there's always gurus and stuff teaching you. And it's not even like they're trying to scam you, they're actually trying to teach you. So. I've been working hard on my upcoming book, Million Dollar Weekend, which is coming out early 2024. Stay tuned. Looking through my notes, I found a lost chapter that is not in the final book. Very mysterious. It reveals things like how to double your income without any new customers, how to create complimentary products to generate more income. One solopreneur did this and made an extra $340,000, how to optimize pricing strategy and maximize profits and more. The lost chapter is not online, or Amazon, or anywhere else. It is only for people on my list like you. You can download it for free at noahkagan.com slash lost. That's noahkagan.com slash lost. It's also below in the description. All right, back to the video. The flight had taken off and I was served the most bougie airplane meal I have ever eaten. Medium rare steak on a plane? I didn't even know that was possible. I was checked out after the food and decided to get some rest so that I could wake up in sunny Spain where I had an absolute blast. I did some sightseeing, ate some fantastic food, and after an amazing few days, it was time to head back home and talk to some more first class passengers. In Barcelona, heading back to JFK, about to jump on a first class flight and see if we can talk to anyone in there and get some advice for people like you and me. All right, so we are in first class. Hi, what is your name? I'm Gustavo. What is it like to fly first class? Listen, we give you this really awesome, welcome kit with a pillow, a blanket, you got your own headphones. Ooh, um, nice headphones. I know, nice headphones. You get, like, you get to recline, you basically get to fly horizontal. How cool is that? <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. What do you do to be able to fly first class? Uh, like, I'm a yoga instructor. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should we do like a session on the class? Sure. Should we do a session? <laughs> what do we want to do? Down dog? Let's go. This looks easy, but I promise you it was not. Lift your right knee forward and step your right foot all the way forward to a crescent lunge. Boom. Arms over your head. Dude, airplane yoga. That's our next thing. How is it to be a yoga instructor? How are you able to do it's, that? I've been teaching for close to 14 years. Uh, now I only teach online, which is really awesome. So really? I get to travel the world and teach from wherever I am. I teach for a couple of brands, uh, Yoga Glow <laughs> and Yoga Works. Okay. How much would it cost to pay you to teach somewhere? Between five and seven hundred dollars. For, for like one class. one class? Well, for like a group, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Before my connecting flight from Chicago to Austin took off, I managed to speak to another person sitting in first class. We're on. All right. I am with Stefano. What up, Stefano? Hey, how's it going? And then what is it like to, to sit in first class? Because a lot of people will be like, oh, I want to sit in first class one day. It's comfier, you're always fed, and you get to look past everybody walk behind you. <laughs> you said your favorite thing to do is to fly. Yeah, no, I'm like a huge plane nerd, so I actually pay attention to what kind of planes they are, what kind of seats they are, what kind of service they offer, and so that like, really excites me. I think flying is magical. I think it's still a privilege. I get excited every single time. And what kind of stuff do you do for a living to afford first class? Um, I'm a nurse, and I just kind of, I mean, this is one of my things that I put my money towards. Oh, I love that. towards the gym or flying. I just don't spend a lot of money on other stuff. Is nursing a career you'd recommend for others? Is it, is it a lucrative career for people that... It can be. Um, if you're an RN and you work really, really hard, there are ways to make it really lucrative. How, how so? Well, depending on if you're at a hospital and your facility has um, a staffing shortage and you can work a ton of overtime, you're going to make a lot of money. If um, you find a way to do per diem jobs on top of like maybe a part-time job or a full-time job, um, then that's a way to make a lot of money. Travel nursing, of course. Yeah. Um, getting to become a nurse practitioner and having your own practice. like. 
a lot of ways to. Our flight was landing and I was almost back home. While I was waiting for my luggage, I bumped into this super well-dressed couple. Well, okay, cool. So I was, uh, I was sitting behind y'all uh, in the first class, and I love the way you guys are dressed. Oh, uh, maybe, you. are you guys in the fa are you guys in the fashion industry, or? Uh, no. What kind of careers are you guys in for be able to afford first class? Uh, the commercial real estate. Oh, wow, that must be interesting. Yeah. Do you recommend people doing uh, commercial real estate? Uh, it can be tricky. I've been in real estate and construction my entire life, my entire career, and so there's ups and downs, just like in everything else, and you just have to hang with the downs and make you know, <laughs> enjoy the ups while you have them. It eventually smooths out and you have a pretty great career. I think one last thing is that we create stories in our head by, oh, when I go talk to that person or when I try to sell my product or when I go do something where I'm asking someone else, we create these narratives like, oh, that person is gonna say no to me or prejudices and weirdness, like they're gonna definitely reject me. And I think we're, I'm always surprised by when I go and talk to people and I ask them these questions, how friendly so many more people are than we think. And when you're selling or you're asking for a raise or asking someone to buy or whatever it is, you're actually be surprised. Like if you go up and you're just a nice person and kind, you probably get accepted and not rejected way more than you think. You like this video, you're gonna love this video right up here where I talk to you, private jet owner, about what he did and advice for people like you and me. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uncle No loves you and I'll see you out there.